Reporting in progress. Barb? Yes, please. Barb, okay. Thanks. All right. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm going to take a motion to come out of executive session now. Um, and you're muted. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, uh, can you hear me now? Guess not. No, they're muted. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, Thank thanks. You. All we were doing was moving to come out of executive session. So um, let me get my agenda here. Um, actually, sorry, before we move on, um, I'll entertain a motion to um, authorize issuance of the RFP as written with a few minor changes as discussed in executive session. Do we have a second? Okay, I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. What? I, you uh, with Jamie I abstaining. Abstain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh dear. All right. I have one. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? Um, Didn't we have one? Well, I, uh, I um, neglect, I'm sorry, I wasn't sort of as focused as I should have been when I built this agenda this time. Um, we, I do want to say that there's some action under a couple of these. For example, we may modify the uh, dog decision based on what happens tonight. And I didn't do that as an action. Do I need to, can I add those to the agenda now? Probably not, right? An action item. So on the agenda, we have it on the agenda to consider a modification to the Indian dog decision. And Rose, can they take an action even though it wasn't listed on the agenda and the warning has an action? Can I add that to the agenda now so that we can do it today? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anybody, anybody who is interested in it knows that's being discussed. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's a possible action. We also, um, the financial report. When Sandra gives the financial report, uh, there's some things we may do. We may actually authorize her to take out a short-term loan. Why is the phone ringing? Michael, if we lost you, we're going to lose you because it's doing something. If you would like to make a call. Okay. Um, That's okay. My internet connection came in, so. Okay. Can you just yeah. cut him out? Or, all right. Okay. Um, we've got minutes of June 26th, and you see them listed there. 710, 712, 715, 719, all the emergency meetings we've been having. 710. Seven, it's on the agenda, Gabrielle. Okay. Uh, anybody have any changes? And we're doing June 26 separate? Um, I don't see why we can't do them all if there's no changes. Okay. Just do them all with one motion. Actually, I would like to pull 712 unless Jake Aho ever sent you that information. You have. I okay. have emailed him again and asked him for it and he didn't Okay. Respond. If you read them, there's a spot where she says, Jake, what, what was this all about? So yeah. I would say we put that one off. So I would take a motion to approve June 26th, July 10th, July 15th, and July 19th. The other option is since the psych board didn't do anything with that GETS, we, I could just remove that sentence. And I like that even better. So, so go ahead if you make that with motion the, to remove that. And, and, and the 712 meeting with the removal of the reference to Jay Gaho. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thanks. OK, public comment. People can, we can't see everybody. Um, can they raise their hands when they're not being shown? Oh, John Brabant wants to speak. All right, I guess that works then. Anybody else want to speak, want to do comment? 
John, we, we, we've got a really full agenda, so please try to be succinct if you could. And just a sec, Jamie, you wanted to say something? I just wanted to say, I think Michael's still on the phone. We're not going to get to the rest of the Curtis Pond stuff until 7.30 or so, so I think we should release yeah, absolutely. Michael. I don't know if you're still there, but um, I think we're good on that for now. I guess he's gone. He said he was getting off because okay. he was going to be off. Okay. okay. All right, John, go ahead. Hi. Uh, just a couple, one, two, two things to talk about briefly, as Anne requested. Um, it has to do with Adam and Village. Um, the first is informational. The new squash culvert, relatively new, last seven, eight years. It's a high capacity culvert that was in, that is intended to prevent overtopping and accommodate flood waters. It worked really well, except that it is more than half full with with debris, uh, gravel and sediment, as is the stream channel above and below. So I just wanted to put that on your radar. That culvert is now a small culvert again, yeah. by virtue of being filled in. Yeah, that's, they were going to start cleaning that, that out this morning, and then things came up, so they'll be excavating it tomorrow. And and just in general, the way to report those things is to call the road crew, right? Is that right, or do they go yeah, through the town Barbara? Garage is good. To right. call the town garage and put it on the phone, so, and they get it on their list. Okay. All right. That's good information. Thank you. Uh, the other piece is, and I'm sure you're aware of this as well, the actual uh, historic culvert that goes under Haggard Road that caused the wash out second time in less than 12 years, um, maybe 10. Um, that needs a serious look down the road. Not now, I know you're all full up, but um, I heard the contractor say, well, there's nothing that can be done there because it's historic and stuff. That That is the reason that road got washed out. So anyway, just want to put that on your radar and I'll sign off, thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, anything else? All right, next item modification of the dog decision. So have you all had a chance? Thank you, I can't, I'm not gonna pay attention to that. Have you all had a chance to look at Inga's request? Elsa. I'm sorry, Elsa's request, thank you. All right. Um, As embodied in all of the emails. Not well, I'll, I'll read it so everybody knows what we're talking about. We had, uh, in the order, it required Elsa to put um, self-locking locks on all the gates. Elsa um, says that this is going to be difficult on the double-wide gates. Would you like to speak, Elsa, Elsa to explain what you're asking for? Uh, as I said, in the original meeting, there are multiple gates in and out of the fence area. There's only one gate that we use on a regular basis, which is a single gate. The other gate sets in and out of the gated area are double gates and they're there for equipment access. The fenced area does not Recording in progress. It doesn't include the top part of my property, so in order to have access to the shed at the top of my property and to be able to bring a vehicle into the fenced yard or up to that top shed if we ever needed to do it. You're muted. Gates. And it's just not possible to make those double gates self-closing. You know, even that fence has been there for one year. And after one winter, they shifted, so the alignment is wonky. Um, so we put hasps and padlocks on both of them. But I was told after initially discussing with Cole that that was not acceptable for the select board. So we're here to Well, Cole doesn't have the authority to change our order. So that's what we're, yeah. So. Cole, do you want to weigh in on that? But Elsa says that it's not possible to put a self-locking uh, lock on a double gate. Is that? Um, it is a lot more difficult as the gates come together. They might not latch up because of the weight of one gate and the way the hinges swing on them. So that is definitely possible. It is possible to do it, but there's a lot more for air. Okay. That, so. mm -hmm. I understand that to be the only request you're making. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Questions? 
discussion? No, so the changes to go from self-locking gates to padlocking with double gates. And, the, and she has a self lock. We have front one being self locking. What? And the front one? Yeah. Gate into that. that that one was that installed. That one is completed in self locking okay. and self locking. Well, because okay. I think that was the overall concern that most of the time that they got out, it was accidental and just something that we shut behind. And most of the time they got out, it was when a tree fell down on the fence, which is a concern I still have. In your order, you said if they ever get out again, I'll be ordered to raise the fence. If they ever, if Tracy ever gets out again, it's most likely to be a natural disaster. I think we're all. Keenly aware of natural disasters right now. Sure. Um, so if she ever comes down on my fence and she gets out, I will then put up a six foot fence, but it's sort of a ridiculous way to solve that problem. So it would be nice if there was some language in there that made clear that, you know, if there were a natural disaster. But at this point, we don't really need to go down that road tonight. Okay. Uh, anybody? Oh, are you? And, and all the other. Parts of the request have been met, and you've seen. Have you seen? You're using the um, dog walking collar. Okay. Okay. Would anybody like to make a motion? I went over tonight before I came here. Oh. <coughs> Somebody like to make a motion? <clears throat> I move that we accept the modifications to the ink pen dog order. Is that what we're calling it? Uh, <clears throat> sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, and would you also, as part of your motion, I'm, I'm going to have to write something up and I'll just sign it. Would you authorize me to sign it? And authorize Ann Winchester to sign. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Elsa. Thanks for coming. Um, David, how are you feeling? Getting better by the day. <laughs> yeah. I'm on. Yes, you're on. And we all got this letter. It's yeah, now a month old, so I haven't updated it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have anything else that's called on the agenda? Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming, Cole. Uh, Cole, do you have any other concerns or yeah, questions? I don't think so. I want pictures of everything. If not, everything's completed up there. So. It'd be nice to get pictures once locks are in place. She already put locks on the okay. gates and in place. So okay. Have, I do have pictures of that, so that's good. Pictures of everything. I think that's good. Do you need okay. anything else? Are you feeling no. pretty good about putting else to come up? Yeah. And Cole's um, going to be signing up for some training, some pretty heavy duty training soon. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cole. Have a good night. You too. I think we're good. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Marge. Thank you, Oh, I see. So this, it's David. So okay. Okay. This, this is, yeah, my name is David Healy. I'm Tom Callis's delegate to CD Fiber. And I'm here to give an update on where, where we are, progress, etc. And the um, biggest question everybody asks me is when am I going to get this And So I'll try to answer that one, which is sort of complicated because our engineering design has on the design in zones. Callus is on the unfortunate privilege of having as many zip codes as zones. Um, so there are five zones in Callus. Two of them, one is ready for um, signing up right now, which is the central core of the town. And there's a map of it on the back of this. And the Meaning the pink map. The uh, pink is currently holding and signing up. <laughs> We expect service to start in early August. Uh, the next zone to be open will be the, uh, the sort of the orange, um, I guess it's called orange, and that'll be sometime in September. Um, for for those on the in, uh, Zoom, that's the west side of town. 
Yes, West Side of Town. The, uh, the other thing that happened, I mean, this project has taken many, many turns, good and bad. Um, it's five years now, if you didn't know. <laughs> um, the hatched area on the map, which is supposedly in the first surface area, runs along um, Route 14. We have not received permission to attach to the Green Mountain Power Poles on Route 14, or permission to attach the hydro electric poles on Route 14. So that's going to be delayed until those poles are ready. And if you didn't know, the Green Mountain Power is planning on Route 14 to move all the power poles from the swamp on the west side of Route 14. There's about 15 of them. They're going to be undergrounding the, the power <coughs> on Route 14 probably next a year from this summer. So that's holding up that part of our connection. The other hatched area. Just so everybody's clear on this, and this is, I've had to answer a bunch of questions. The money we receive from the state capital funds only allows us to go to on grid households. So there's a cluster of off grid houses in, in off of, of mm -hmm. Moscow Woods. So then we did, we designed for all those houses, but we're not building for those houses. Um, we haven't figured out how we get there yet without more money, or if they want it. The other thing is, people ask what, what kind of speeds we're getting. We're offering 100 megabits per second up and down, all the way up to uh, 2 gigabits up and down. Um, the, so far, and, and for us, this is important because our operating revenue awareness is, is what is going to sustain the, uh, the business over time. Um, and so we're happy so far. I think 42 people have signed up for service. One week, and we're hoping it grows pretty rapidly after that. Um, the next item I want to bring up. A hey, question? Yep. So the the forty two that have signed up are in the pink, or can anybody from any of the yeah, colors sign up? They're in the pink. The only area that's open is signing up. Is the pink. Okay. The uh, the orange will be open up probably in two weeks, <clears throat> but the service won't begin until September. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am having a workshop, two workshops this week. Although I, I you know, who knows how many people attend. I'm hoping to explain a lot of details about subscriptions, conduit. How do I connect? Why do I? Why would I change from Comcast to um, all the various things? How do I get TV if you don't buy TV? Do I need a phone service? Do not need a phone service? So I'll be able to answer a lot of <coughs> those questions. I take I take a good hour to answer questions. Most of the questions I'm getting are answered on our webpage and I frequently ask questions. But very few people actually take the time. It's a lot of work um, to go there, but most of them are there. And there's a new question every day that I, we have to deal with that we didn't think about. Um, it, it's been going so pretty well. The other update is since I last talked, which was last um, we now have a, uh, an executive director, Janelle Smith, and she's pretty, pretty good at what she's doing. And we hired an operations manager who has a long history in the, in the fiber business. His name is Lucas Stubbs, who lives in Williamstown. Um, and we're about, we've just made a job offer to a person to be our community outreach person today. So hopefully she will be on board by the end of August. Relieve me a lot of my work, <laughs> communication-wise. Wastefield Champagne Telecom is our operating partner, and they'll be the ones doing the house visits to determine what you need and don't need, and how much it's going to cost to connect. Most connections will be if it's within 400 feet and it's above ground. There's no charge at all. If it's in a conduit, there has to be a room in an existing conduit. And the homeowner, a business will have to put in a new conduit at their own expense. But we'll still provide the 400 feet of fiber. It's beyond that, it's a dollar per foot cost for extending the fiber beyond the 400 feet. Um, I think those are sort of the key installation questions that I can answer questions on that too. 
the other thing was, that I wanted to bring up was the town opera money, which was approved by the previous select board. And I'm not sure whether I had a chance to talk to you about what the contents are. There was a memo signed by the board and by CD Fiber <coughs> discussing how that money would be used. And then it talks about <coughs> paying for the cost of connecting the town office, the town hall, uh, the, the public works garage if that was needed, um, and then the community facilities of Maple Pond Community Center, having a uh, community building, Memorial Hall, um, East Cowles Rec Center, and Kent Museum. Mm. So those are official, those are in the uh, agreement to connect. And that money would be used for that. So the town authorized 200000 out of our town money, and the state has matched that with another 200000 The remaining amount, which is the bulk of it, will go to making the connections to houses, um, which are costing us $1,500 for the connection in terms of finance. So I can report probably quarterly about how that money is being spent, if that's something that we would like. And so you have an idea of how it's going down. And, um, I have to admit that Cowles is the most generous of the many towns in the district. Um, although I have to admit, I'd say three towns gave 100,000, and then six towns gave 50,000, and then two towns gave 30,000. Um, service startup. Well, since I wrote this in, in the earlier version you read, we thought we'd be serving right now in July. We've had a number of setbacks. The least of which is well, a combination of electrical service to the substation, which you can laugh about, but anyway. Um, we had to get a permit, a weapons permit, to put the cabinet that has all the electronics. So the electronics at the substation are all in now. The electrical connection got done on Friday. Are we talking about the one on Kent Hill Road? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on Kent Hill Road. Mm -hmm. you know, it survived the flood, it got it. It's worth four hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff. <laughs> um, so that was good to see. I went over there the next morning to make sure that. Um, so what happened in the, when, um, when people sign up, the Wasteville Champlain Telecom will schedule an appointment. You come by your house, check the distances, check where you want the um, the device on the outside of your house. If some of you already have cable, you already have a box, if that's where you want the box, you should tell them at that point. If you want it in a different place, on the side of your house, that's the time to tell ways for the company telephone. Uh, <coughs> part of the installation includes a Wi-Fi router in your house. And if you want that technician to um, scan your whole house to see whether you can use or utilize or want Wi-Fi extenders, they'll do that for you. You have to pay for the extra Wi-Fi extenders yourself to get the bill you want for that. Um, and I think that's all I have for the presentation. But I'll be happy to answer. Well, David, you also submitted this. You wanted us to talk about which service we wanted. Yes, I did. But it was not the agenda, so I did because it's an action item to me. Oh, well, we need the inform. I don't know. Yeah. Do we? I mean, I this right is now, Greek to me, but right maybe now, to some town, of you. It town of Calvary is not signed up for service. Mm -hmm. but They're it, eligible to sign up for service right now. And it, uh, they are, oh. the, there's two, there's only two rates. One is a gigabit rate for $179, and a two gigabit rate for $259 a month. And that you get, you know, the same standard installation, and right now, they've already, Wakesville has already done the site assessment here to do whatever needs to be done to get to both buildings. Um, and I talked to Jordan about which would be most appropriate. I think the town office probably could use the two gigabyte one because I think as you expand your, your uh, what do you call it, your deed retrieval system, mm. that kind of thing, it's going to be relatively intensive. Um, you're probably not going to use all that capacity at this moment, mm -hmm. but over time, I think you probably will. In the town office, one gigabit Passive. is probably more than enough. I mean, the town hall, one gigabit is probably enough. <coughs> they handle anything here. 
is it easy enough or possible to swap between plans over time? Like yes. if we started the right. town office at one right. and a year from now we clearly needed yeah. more, we could go and up. There's no contracts. I mean, if you hate us at the end of the first year, you can get rid of us. Um, <coughs> yeah, no, you can actually have to pay a down grade if you want. Okay. Good question. Uh, the ARPA fund that covered in the, in the agreement that uh, obligates us to um, installing, we're covering the cost of installing at the office hall, garage, Kent Museum, uh, Memorial Hall. Uh, is that is that just getting the fiber to the uh, to the building, or covering the subscription costs? Or does it, it, it would not cover the subscription costs. There are extra costs to make the network connection to the town office, especially. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. So uh, Jared's not here, so I can't have him answer. I yeah, I guess I'm just I guess I'm just curious how. How much information do we need to make those, to facilitate those connections, and then knowing that the subscriptions are going to be relative to each organization's desires, uh, you know, can we go ahead and make those connections uh, and, and do that work and commit those funds without anybody committing to a to a service level or a subscription? Well, I have already reached out to all those organizations. All that the Kent Museum has said they're doing it. Yeah. So, um, okay. I sent two messages to the Kent. Yeah, but yeah. So the account, you know, the quarterly accounts will show you where the money has been spent. Oh, just a question. The, so the undergrounding of the GMP wires is um, so there. So they're gonna you're gonna go up on the poles and then they're gonna take the poles down or what? That, we're not gonna do that. We said that's crazy to spend that money. Yeah. Um, they, they wanted to do that. They're gonna ask us to pay three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for new poles in the swamp. And we said no, I don't think so. Um, and so the undergrounding, delaying that that area until they put it underground, will will we'll, we'll happen. Is to put a conduit for GMP's electricity, then we'll have our own conduit that'll go in at the same time they're putting in their conduit. The same thing I think Adelphia and Consolidate will go in at the same time. And they're like different colors and they have your stamp on them or something? They, when they get up on the pole, they, they're, all, they're all uniquely identified, yes. Mm -hmm. How they do that, I don't know. <laughs> because I mean, there's going to be a lot more undergrounding everywhere. So yeah, yeah. Um, is this your first underground with CV fiber? No, we actually are using a underground on Lightning Ridge Road. That was by um, uh, Tucker Road and, and uh, I mean, where, that was an, where two conduits were run last year by Velco. As Velco is connecting all the substations and power facilities in the state of Vermont. So they had to run fiber to the lift substation and went to Worcester to the power plant there. And so they put in two. Usually when you put in conduit, you put in two. Instead of allowing us for no charge to use their extra conduit. Mm -hmm. um, we are also putting underground in Foster Hill. Um, we got, so last year we got <coughs> permission, I think, for five different road permit, road, uh, road right away underground permits from the town. I think none of them have, done yet, have been done yet. I can't, especially the possible uh, um, I don't know where they are, but if you haven't seen that record, I will make it available to you. But the record? The, the permits. You've got the town issue permits. Oh, this. like the memo that had the thing yeah, with the, 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 the town hall and the, yeah. No, the, memo, the memo for the the public, uh, the road commissioner had to sign off on these oh. because it's under, they're digging up the stones right away um, to do this. Um, is there a, a, a time frame with a right of way for okay. them to, to do the work within a certain amount of time, or are they still within that time frame? They're still within that time frame. I think it has not to come back. I think this is a 
a no-brainer for both these buildings, regardless of the answer, but I'm curious if either Barbara or Sandra know what we currently pay for internet. And and the second part, it, it was it in here? And uh, that, oh, no, so that, that one, yeah, it's the, that last round of bills I just sent her. Uh, oh, yeah. I thought it was right there. 260 Did something? Do you know? Oh. Uh, 266.53. Is that for both? That's telephone and internet. And that is. I don't know if they're. Are they invoiced for town hall and the town office together? No, there are three there. So at 10 5 at the at numbers, the number beginning 10 5 18 is for the town office. The number beginning 10561 is for the town hall. And the numbers beginning 60, uh, pardon me, 25, it might be 30. 61. 61, uh, that is for the garage. So, okay. Uh, so that's six hundred and one dollars then a month for the three facilities for telephone and internet. And would we be switching our phone to go through CV Fiber? So you can you can do the phone through CV Fiber for thirty five dollars a month per line. Per line. And you can do multiple line. I assume yes. we have multiple lines. We have four lines at the town office. I, I would defer to our lead technology on this. Okay. Uh, the but RV or yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, <clears throat> no, not everything, but uh, you know, once you've got the, once you have the internet and install the internet provider, and then uh, assuming that everything right now, since it's coming through, uh, consolidated, is a voice over IP for it? Is it a hard line? Do you happen to know? I'm pretty sure it's a hard line. Is it a hard line? So there might, once we have higher speed internet, we'll probably be in a more competitive position to shop around a voice, voice yes. over IP uh, system, um, which will likely have hardware costs and a, and a contract. So we could talk to RB about it. We could also talk to uh, Waitsfield uh, Telecom. If they don't necessarily, they like, you to be within their like service region, but technically, as long as you have an internet connection, um, they can they can provide you with with a phone service and hardware and that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to kind of compare what what the offer is through uh, Waitsfield Telecom yeah, or CV Fiber or or really anyone at that that point. What is the current? speed that you're getting from consolidated? I have no idea. It can't be much. I mean, I could do a speed test right now, but it'd probably kick us all off, so. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's not very fast. Well, um, when we make a decision to go with a tier of service, you'll want to check the requirements that Nimric has to be in the cloud. Their uh, upload and download requirements, uh, that it would be desirable for the town to have that ability. Yeah, that, that's when David and I were, were talking about the different service levels for the various facilities. That's kind of why, that's one of the reasons we were leaning towards a two gig uh, connection for the town office specifically um, so that those who are facilitating cloud-based services or remote connections um, whether it be for financial services or for uh, you know planning commission and zoning administrators or an administrator who would more easily be able to access records with uh, with better connections they they may not need as as robust connection, but if there are multiple people trying to get that from the office at the same time, that would certainly justify the, the higher level of connectivity at, at the office, um, given the amount of resources that are that are stored there. So the one thing about cloud-based, I don't know if the town's moved most of its records to the cloud yet, 
Um, the, the one of the beauties of, of fiber, if you put a battery backup in, you end up have service when even there's no electricity. So there's some mm -hmm. benefits there, especially accessing your service. I mean your data. <laughs> So I did run a speed test and it's 6.1 over 0. 0.58. <laughs> <laughs> not great. You pay a lot of money for not much. Yeah. yeah. Other questions? Would somebody like to make a motion? Are we ready for that? Or do you need to gather more information? I confess I'm barely following this discussion. <laughs> Um, I guess the piece I feel like we're not ready to decide is the phone piece. I feel like I'd be ready to decide the internet piece. Yeah, the possible action is approve changing internet provider. Um, right. We we can we can do that and. Well, I think back it, it may, we may want to take a closer look to see what our, we likely are in a contract with Consolidated. So, you know, I think before we commit to, uh, to a specific service level, we might want to see what our, uh, what our cancellation options are for Consolidated. I mean, we can always, <laughs> we can of course add another service and bring it in and start utilizing it, but we may not we may, may not be in a position where we can uh, cancel our consolidated connection uh, quite as quickly, and that might uh, influence which one we want to pay for for what amount of period of time. Um, so it'd be good to go maybe a couple more weeks and have a conversation maybe with, uh, with Sandra and then uh, also get a better idea of what we have at the town office before we commit to certain service levels um, at each facility. And then we can make a very sweeping informed decision kind of next next I'll time we circulate yeah so any of you know off the top of your head if we're in or any of you if we're in contract and for how long but i can look it up and find out yeah i think we're in the last few lines were added when judy was town clerk i i don't think there were any i think that's the last upgrade well, I, don't, I don't remember the length of the contract. They're usually like two years, I think. Right. Yeah, there were there were four lines. You're talking about telephone lines? Yeah. There were four when I started there. So it was before me. But um, also the internet could be under contract. I think it was a lot, it's a bundle. It's usually it's usually a bundle, so your pricing for everything is going to be bundled, and then the contract also uh, the phones are likely owned by them. Uh, if we signed a contract, though, we may though we we may own the phones. I, I I'm not sure. Yeah. That. So it sounds like we'll take this up in, yeah. in two weeks and, and, and yeah. uh, figure it out then. All right. Great. Uh, thanks, other David. Questions? Yeah. Thanks, David. Yeah. Just one thing before we move to the next item, if I could. When I want to say hello to this power group back here. Look who's sitting here. Three town clerks, treasurer. <laughs> and also, um, I can only see a few people on Zoom. Would one of you who are on Zoom please be sure to write down everybody in attendance so you can pass that on to Rose? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks. We're going to move on to the um, or curb cut. And Larry submitted, this was, he's already done it, is that right? And we're ratifying so what Larry, he's already done? Larry did it. Yeah. He did it badly. And so then Larry resubmitted it with what basically ended up being his curb cut. The guys went in and kind of fortified the road, which held up beautifully under <laughs> the raid several weeks ago. Um, and currently the agreement they didn't want to write anything on the new curb cut. The agreement is that when Larry is done <coughs> and ready for us to finish it off, the town crew will come in and finish it off. When he's done with what? So, like, we don't want him to finish the part that belongs to the town. Like, typically... Oh, when he's done with his driveway, when, then. when he's done with building his home and the big trucks have come in and done all their work and, and it's ready to be completed, the town crew will come in, and he, he did submit a check for above what we had done already. Um, 
Okay. So he's willing to, to pay for it, and it's just, we don't want to tempt him by writing down, you know, this and that, and just we'll go in and... Okay. But there shouldn't be much needed once he's done. It's All right. looking pretty good. And and his description of where it is is correct? I, it is where it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So um, what we want to do is put in a condition that uh, when he's finished with his home and driveway, the t town will come in and do it, and we will at his expense. Yes. Okay. That'll work. Any questions? Great. I'll take a motion to that effect. Or actually, Rose, did you get all that <coughs> well enough? Um, no, I think that we need to have a Um, that when Larry has completed the work that is being done on his property, our road crew will come in and finish the curb cut at his expense. And also as part of the motion, authorize me to sign the permit. Is that right, Barbara? You, here it is. And then once uh, we've written this up, I'll sign it. No, we have to have three of us sign it, at least. So yeah, I've got, I've got, I can't see what's in your hand. Uh, this is the one, the that's permit. The, that's the application to move forward. This is notice of approval permit, to, I mean. to proceed yeah, to construct curb cut. So um, let me think. So he can wait, can't he? He can wait on this. We'll just sign it at the next meeting. Because <laughs> okay. we still have to write the conditions. Okay. But we'll still take the motion so we can go ahead and get it done. So, um, someone, you're going, someone's going to make the motion that when Larry has completed the work on his property, the road, road, road crew will come in and finish that part? Where it we'll finish the, the, the curb cut. At his expense. Thank you. And I will make that motion. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Hi. Okay. Thanks. Donna, you've been doing an amazing amount of work and you called all these people today and collected in, um, information uh, about salary. Are those the hard copies? Yes. Okay. Oh. Which I found again. Oh. Okay. Sure. No. I think I have. Yeah, I have all this. Did you know? back to you the so Donna is going to talk about um, hiring a new treasurer to replace the one we all love and have begged to stay, but she won't do it. <laughs> stay, stay. <laughs> so I kind of forget where we left off. So I don't know if you want to talk about the job description, the ad, or jump right into the salary. I think the job description is pretty much what we went over last time. Mm -hmm. And then you worked on the ad. <clears throat> I mean, yes, the advertisement and the salaries. <clears throat> so I think that's what we want to focus on today. Does anybody want more than that? Okay, and Sandra has reviewed it and agreed that <clears throat> that's pretty much right. The, I thought the job description was ready to post. Yeah. 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 Um, so the advertisement, um, so we thought we would post this to Indeed, uh, Callis Front Porch Forum, and other towns Front Porch Forum, town website, <coughs> uh, the Vermont Municipal Clerk Treasurer Association, uh, the VLCT website, the Vermont Government Finance Officers Association, and word of mouth. And one thing we need is a, um, an email address for people to respond to. So I had, I had talked to Tegan about it. We were, the, the committee was thinking jobs at callisvermont.gov. But I think Tegan was thinking that maybe we could use a Gmail account just to add another email address with the vermont.gov might cost something. That's yeah. it. We wanted to check in with you all to see if you wanted the expense of another callis. Remind us how much that is. Was it 20? The, the, no. the basic. Uh. <laughs> I mean, we weren't just thinking about just for this position, but going forward, you know, what does the select board want 
people right. to respond to when there's other jobs? I think it's about $12 a month for this. No, that's the standard, so it's less than that. It's probably like $8 a month or something. But the other thing that we can do is set up an alias for any of the other accounts. So we can like make up a make up an email address and it just it just lives underneath one of the other accounts. It still oh, goes. Would it, would it be going to the hiring committee or the or the person who owns that account? Uh, yeah, that would, yeah, I mean, it would go to the person who owns that account, yeah. or we can make a distribution list uh, that goes to the hiring committee. Yeah. Um, so there, there are some free ways that we could do it. Uh, the, the alias way, they, RV can even set up like a, a filter so that anything that's coming in from that address goes in. Go, it, it won't have its own inbox. It'll still go into the owner's main inbox, but you can arrange for there to be a folder and filter so it automatically like pulls it out of the inbox and sticks it into a folder. I, I'm um, happy to do whatever you all want to do. I so just wanted sort of your say before I got to well, Tech. My vision had been <clears throat> that everything would just go to Donna and then the hiring committee would review them and then you know, interview some of them and bring us a couple of names that we just wouldn't have much to do with it until then. Are you seeing no, it you differently? Want, well, I, I just don't know if you want <clears throat> people contacting my personal email. And Do me you want people and contacting me representing the town? <laughs> she, we, she can oh, set up a callousjobs at gmail.com email address that doesn't then infiltrate her personal and has a, it has an identification and it's free. It's just not a .gov email address, it's a gmail. Well, is there some reason we need the extra security? I don't think so. I don't well, think I mean, so. why would we pay for it if that's if it's yeah. that simple? Yeah, that was right. No, I'm happy doing a Gmail if somebody would just set it up for me. I, I, I could do that. Yeah, we can oh. do that. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 The filtering thing makes me nervous. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me feel like you know a, a, a resume. All those resumes that are going to pour in are just going to go <laughs> off. <somewhere. laughs> All those well, resumes. It would, it would like it would be set up. And Tegan's inbox as like an alias, a temporary alias, and I would just go into a folder and she could forward them to you. Um, and that is also fine, yeah. Uh, or we, we might just be able to set it up as a distribution list that just, it would just go to Donna. Uh, I don't think the distribution lists have to be internal. And so that way we have a email address it's a distribution list that then just goes to one person or however many it, would, it can go to two people. And then that way Donna's email, personal email address doesn't get revealed publicly. Um, I, can, I can send it. Do you want to ask Colin maybe to see if a distribution list could be used like that? And then it would just go directly to, to Donna. Okay. You sure? Uh, any input okay. on the advertisement, on the ad? I think it looks I, mean, I think we might change it a little bit for, you know, these particular um, places that we're going to post it. But this is the general. Mm -hmm. just so the vision for full-time treasurer is they continue to be the delinquent tax collector and like to... Well, that's up to you. So well, because... because if we were to have a town administrator, would it still be a full-time treasurer job, ordinarily? I believe so, yes, not your reason. I mean, we aren't, we, aren't at, we aren't at that point yet, really, about the town administrator. I mean, that's a dream for some of us. Yeah. Um, you just want to be careful that job, pieces of the job are not overlapping in both of those positions, or then you're taking from your treasurer, your treasurer's position, right. and then you have a full-time person that may not have full-time responsibilities. So you just want to be careful how you describe I mean, the town administrator job. Yeah, I mean, I have a draft um, job description for a town administrator, and it's separate from the um, treasurer. But I mean, I'm just thinking about a full-time, a full-time treasurer. Um, right now, we have a part-time treasurer. Who's
extremely competent and has institutional knowledge and can do the job really well part time. But um, I mean, presumably we have someone you know who gets hired who's like pretty good at you know. What, I, I'm just trying to think. Like, are are you still the delinquent tax collector? Because that's that's a chunk of time, right? So it just seems like you would want that to be part of the, the treasurer position, potentially, if we were and, and, hiring full-time. And the way it's broken time. out is that it, it's two different jobs, and she's paid two different salaries for those two jobs. But we can change that, couldn't we? Because if we're hiring a full-time treasurer, I think we're going to want to get a full-time position. And I'm not, like, I mean, I, I don't know. It just, it just seems like going from part-time to full-time, we just want to make sure it's a full-time job. I think we need to define what full-time is. I think yeah. in the past, and then, and then of course we have the up, not, not up-to-date personnel manual. So in the past, and I also, um, I don't think I have it with me, uh, did some research on towns around us, and I think a full-time, <coughs> usually full-time office staff was like 32 hours a week. Um, I don't know if you remember who you were when you were the real town treasurer. I, when I was hired, I was hired for 32 hours a week. And without going into a long story, there was a select board administrator who owned oh. a chunk of what is often treasurer's work. When he left, that work came to me, and that job then became a 40-hour a week job. Can you say what some of those things were? Uh, budget, HR, running payroll, and that, but so that 32 hours a week, I would just be popping out checks, providing reports, uh, sign, you know, acquiring loans. He would check the, the idea was he would be checking the, uh, time cards, inputting that information in, I would run that, uh, I would run the uh, checks and sign them. He would be signing people into benefits. He would be working with the select board at budget time, and he was responsible for the town report. And uh, so that, I mean, I'll be honest with you, it, like, I was looking at a retirement job when I was, I was like, oh, this would be great, 32 hours a week, no stress, all the higher end analytical stuff is somewhere else. And it was paid at that level as well. It, it was $38,000 a year, so which I thought was just fine for basically a very low level, low stress, like end of job life type job and then it became something much more which I think this job description describes. Uh, if you don't go all the way forward with a town administrator, I mean your treasurer is going to be performing those higher level uh, tasks. And if, if that we, salary should reflect that. It, did the last town administrator also act as road commissioner? No, no, no. no. This, this, it was a, so it was pretty different. It wasn't an yeah. administrator. It was a select board assistant. Yeah, that's right. The person okay. didn't work out. And he forced was, Sandra to pick up the slack. Yeah, okay. Long story. <laughs> so, but but we, was 32 hours. we may not be talking about somebody filling those same functions then. Yeah, okay. That's... I, mean, I think it is a really good idea to think about the, the other positions in the office in, in relation to a new structure that would have a town administrator, but we haven't gotten there yet. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We've had one or two other things happen. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I look at it as, look at it as a, a full-time job, whether it's 32 hours, 40 hours, 38 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the other thing, is it going to be salaried or is it going to be by the hour? And I think it's going to end up being paid by the hour. You do. I, I think you're going to have to have, you're going to have to have an HR lawyer look at it. Don't you agree, Sandra? And I'm there going to are there statutory requirements for what uh, becomes hourly and not hourly? Which I have one if you're salaried, I think 
supposed well, to be supervising two, two people. people. Supervising so, some. This one person would not be supervising two people. Right. This person. There is some supervisory requirement to be salaried. Right. Um, it's two people. Oh wait, Tegan's salary. Tegan's salary. She's she exempted because she's no. an elected official. Oh. She's <laughs> exempted from overtime. Oh. There are a lot. Of, unfortunately, we aren't even entitled to unemployment insurance. Well, our road crew is all salary. They're not supervised. They're they're, they're, no, they're hourly. hourly. They're hourly. They're Oh my gosh, if they are salary, do you think they'd be putting in 70 hours? <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody's interested, I can yeah, read the test up. for a salaried employee. Yeah. Um, they must be mm -hmm. compensated on a basis not less than $684 a week. Uh, the primary duty must be managing the enterprise or managing a recognized department. The employee must regularly direct the work of at least two or more full-time employees. The employee must have the authority to hire or fire mm -hmm. other employees. I mean, I think you were paid by the hour, weren't you? I was salaried. Yeah. So was I, but we didn't really know what we were doing. It, <laughs> I mean, it seems we like a position that <laughs> makes sense for salary because the hours yeah. necessarily fluctuate throughout the year. Yeah. Okay. But if we're not allowed to, I think we can. You get the criteria. I think somebody should look into it. it. I, I think as long so, as payroll so is so outsourced so. uh, the way it is currently, that this job could be done in a 32 hour week. Mm -hmm. I really do. With the understanding that that will expand, like probably beginning in August through the end of January. And that's taxes, budget time, yeah. town report, town meeting. Mm -hmm. So it will expand and then it will contract again. And I think the 32 hour a week is based on the fact that NEMRIC, which um, is going to be doing. Uh, payroll and monthly reconciliations, and, and we have to have NEMRIC for a separation of duties. Right, M the monthly reconciliations yeah. are that's a best practice piece of this. It's how you're getting your clean audits. So we don't have a, so we don't have anybody in the town office that is like the HR person or the hiring firing. We don't have anybody like that. No, it just sort of jumps around. The last quarter does the hiring. That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. What the treasurer does is um, is the human resource onboarding. If somebody is hired, and also does the research behind if there's you know raises and um, Blue Cross Blue Shield or or other benefits changes. Usually, that's the treasurer that. You know, follows that those changes and reports the select board about it. So the, the bare minimum has been done by Wendy with Nemric and Barbara, kind of working together to do basic onboarding and that kind of thing. But I'm sure we're missing a lot of these statutes and things. So during the years that Sandra was an employee as treasurer, we considered her our, our HR administrator, doing the right. things that mm -hmm. they just noted. We've never had an HR director, somebody who really understands. The entirety of HR, HR law, and can help us write an updated personnel policy and so forth. So she would administer those HR functions. I just have to say that the town's HR policy actually originated Stone with David Healy and Stone Environmental. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I took so, it here's and rewrote it. What do uh, we need to do tonight? Well, I guess is it okay to go out and start advertising? And then, do you want to talk about salary? Um, let's just have a quick conversation about salary. Why don't you quickly walk us through what information you gathered? Yeah, and there's, a, there's a lot of information here, and you know, it starts out with the past treasurer salaries. Um, and then what I sent you today on the very last page is what other towns have been paying. Um, and, and you got most of this by calling them and asking them, is that right? I go to their town reports. Oh. Um, and then I've also gone to um, 
the Vermont League of Cities and Towns Compensation Survey from 2002. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I think East Montpelier is interesting because they reviewed and increased their salaries right after COVID. And they're paying their treasurer $62,000 a year. Um, she does, I, she's, I think she's like the, also their HR person who does a lot of HR things. I don't have her job description, but mm -hmm. I could get it. Mm -hmm. um, well, it sounds like we need, we need a little more work to figure out the salary range. Would you agree? Or, or do you um, think this is... I mean, do you want the committee to talk more about these these figures? What do you guys think? I think um, I know one thing that Marianne was really concerned about is that she wanted the um, the wage to correspond with people's background and their education. Yeah. But if that was true in the past, none of us would have ever been town treasurers. I think we have to. I think we have to realize this is a municipal treasure. It's not national life for the state of Vermont. Or so you wouldn't pay any attention to their background? Well, yeah, I think at this point we have to. But mm -hmm. if somebody came along who had been a municipal treasurer who knew Nemrick, I'd raise, I'd raise this salary for them. Yeah, so you agree with Marion that I, I was trying yeah, to Yeah, but see, the, 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 the proposed Dallas treasurer wage scale is relevant, Bachelor oh. of Arts, you know, we might not find somebody who has a relevant Bachelor of Arts, but we might find somebody with a lot of experience. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, and you would negotiate, we would negotiate yeah. that at that point. Yeah. But this would give them some idea of what we might be willing to talk about. Right. I just don't think we want to be too rigid. Right. But yeah, this is kind okay. of a, yeah. Yeah. a framework to start. What's our population? 1,800? What is it? population. 1,600. 1,800. Did we want a little bit? Yeah, I think maybe a little bit higher. That's right around 1,600. Yeah, it's been around 1,600. I thought it went up like 100 or something. It could be 16 one. It was 61. All right, let's... Would you like the hiring to get together again and kind of... Well, yeah, go I, I'm ready to say send this thing out. Let's get going. Yeah, yeah. As as um, what yeah. about the rest of you? I don't, I don't know how we advertise it without having an answer to the salary question. Well, we say commensurate with um, experience. Uh, knowledge and experience. Yeah, right. Well, except that when they start getting all these resumes flowing in, that's going to be people's first sure. question. And Donna's going to need to go back to them and say, and say, well, we haven't really decided well, that Well, can't we yet. figure it out? Aren't you meeting on August? You can say range. Okay. You can say range, yeah. yeah. Well, it's also, you know, it's, it seems like uh, other jobs in the town should have a range. I think Marianne also wanted to say something. Oh, is she, oh she's no. there. Okay. Oh. Well, yeah, I'm here. Uh, if people are concerned about credentials as a benchmark, some agencies choose to um, equate years of experience with um, with college credentials. So two years of experience on the job, for example, only might be equivalent to a year of experience, or three years might be equivalent to, to some other marker. Um, normally, that's in the personnel policies. <laughs> All oh, right. <laughs> well, it sounds like the committee should meet again to, to talk a little bit about what the ranges should be, but, okay. but you should get the ad out okay. now. At least that's what I'm suggesting. Okay. Gabrielle, you wanted to say something? Well, I'm just curious. A, a comment you made earlier about if, if, if any of us had had to have experience as treasurers, none of us would have been treasurers. And I'm just curious, um, did, um, I guess there's... Two, two, it's two, just two of us. I'm a sociology. Okay, so you, so Judy, you were never. No, no Sam. Sandra was a treasurer at Mister. So you should. Yeah. yeah, and I was not. I was an assistant treasurer. Okay, so I'm just curious. Did, did you have three years of double entry bookkeeping experience? Absolutely not. I okay. transferred That's colleges to avoid the math credit. <laughs> 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 The treasurer was both the clerk and the treasurer and was voted in. And then when I became, when I took that position, very soon thereafter, I asked the town to vote 
to separate the two positions and have the treasurer be hired by the select board. Because somebody you know, with experience really needed to be doing the job. I just, want, I just want to add that um, we also lived through the delinquent tax collector being oh. a separate person than the treasurer, and I would not want anyone to have to live through that again. So you think that the treasurer should be the delinquent Absolutely. tax collector? Absolutely. So that then that should be one of the job no numbers. And they have to, and their phone was at home, and yes. it was a disaster. Is it part of the job description? No. It's a, I guess we need to find out if legally we can have that be, a, if it's separate or not. So Sandra, in, when she was a real employee, she was paid $10,000 a year to be doing the tax collector. In, your, in fiscal year 24 budget, I think it's $11,000 was put in there. Mm -hmm. But why couldn't it just be part of the job description? I guess it can be as long as... I mean, by statute, there has to be a delinquent yeah. tax collector. Yeah, you have to have a delinquent tax collector. The, the oh, only caveat I have to having the same person as a delinquent tax collector and the treasurer is to, um, I would say, you, you wouldn't, you, I think you have to show some sort of salary because otherwise a delinquent tax collector gets paid um, the penalty. And there is clearly, a con in my mind, a conflict yes. right, for to be paid a penalty if you're the treasurer and you're determining whether something is late or not, and there are calls that have to be made, uh, there just are, you are benefiting yourself if you are declaring a parcel late. So you want true. to avoid that, and what you might do, what I think is appropriate, is to have a separate budget line, and that position is paid regardless of penalty. So you don't put your treasurer slash delinquent tax collector in a position where they could be called out for a conflict of interest. It's, it's really, you just don't want that. I, we did that in Worcester. There was a separate budget line. It can be the same person. Uh, not everybody, want, I, I will say, not everybody's gonna wanna do that. That, you, that would be a question because collecting delinquent taxes is a very different. It's it's a different it's a different skill set than just doing your treasurer job when you're interfacing with folks who are struggling. Um, it it's it's a bill it's bill collection and they're. Not everybody's going to like There's a different yeah. kind of communication. Yeah. It's yeah. and everybody approaches it differently. Mm -hmm. But you would want to ask that person if they would be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I would just be very well prepared to discuss whatever it is, the salary range or the hourly range and the job description along with the delinquent tax collector because I, I think the, a full-time treasurer and what I hope will be another full-time position of um, some sort of um, administrator is just like, if we're, whatever it is, it has to be a, like, if it's advertised as full-time, we want it. We want it to be a full-time job. And I have a list of the tax collector um, duties, which, which I think is, I don't know if it's in the okay, statute. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I can get that thing listed. So I think we're ready to, okay. to say, uh, yeah, go ahead and start okay. advertising. And meanwhile, we'll have a meeting to talk about what the salary yeah. should be so that you can answer the questions as they come in. Mm -hmm. Does everybody agree with that? I don't think we need to vote on it. Just let them go forward. Anybody object or want to add something? Okay, seeing nothing. Thank you okay. so much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, you probably wouldn't be ready to come back in two weeks with anything, but let us know if you do want to report or ask um, a are question. Are you you're meeting on the seventh? You think? The 7th well, the um, yeah. The, that's just because we have to set the. We're we're going to need to start raising money quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots. Um, the are struggling. Didn't you talk to John? Yeah, he said he was going to Yeah, so Sandra and could have it. that ready yeah. on Monday. Yeah. And if we... It'll be Wednesday, supposedly. Yeah, if we wait oh. longer, then it will be longer before we can start yeah. collecting money. That's mm -hmm. why we wanted to do that. Um, okay, thanks. Let's see, Sandra, you're up to talk about 
things like that. Yeah. You have the uh, end of the year report. It was in Google Drive. And uh, happily, we ended up hard copies. Did you end up being an extra hard copy up there? Yes. Yeah, Rose has it. Rose, Rose has it. Do you need I have an that's extra one. Okay, I have an extra one here. I have two. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's really no scribbling or calculation or projecting. This is an unaudited uh, end of year uh, report. Uh, we ended the year ahead by $400,000, Sorry about that. Um, so. Some of that was balance from the previous year, is all, that right? All of it was balance, right? We were originally projecting somewhere around 500, and then we were going to go past by eight, uh, 80 to 120,000, which is well, yeah, which is right within what you were expecting last yeah. last time, right? So. So you had started out your year with. I'm just going to round these numbers off for ease of mm -hmm. conversation, $521,000 plus. Uh, we did go uh, a budget and revenues were in the red by $115,000 plus. So we ended the year again with an unaudited um, fund balance of $405,000 plus. And that is very handy under the existing circumstances. I'm happy to take any questions. I do uh, want to let you know that Toby and I are in contact very frequently trying to um, get a feel for what the monthly, weekly expenditures are going to be to cover FEMA. So one thing I have done to assist the board is to, uh, and Nimric is ideal for this purpose, we've created a separate fund for FEMA expenses. And what I'm going to be able to do is track those non-budgeted FEMA expenses independent of budgeted expenditures. So you're gonna have materials, contractors, overtime, and some supplies. Uh, that will be thrown in there, although supplies are not reimbursable, uh, like for instance the pads for the fellas to keep track of oh, their time. Sorry. Oh no, that's all. That's <laughs> very helpful. That's, they are <laughs> fabulous and that's exactly what they need. So we're going to be able to see in, uh, in it's Fund 97, if, if I start to resort to a number, that's the FEMA number, we're going to be able to track it uh, order by order exactly what we are spending on non-budgeted FEMA amounts. Uh, the uh, Community National, uh, Community Bank NA reached out to me initially shortly after the event to say, we are here for you, we're working with other towns, when, if you need us, let us know. I reached back out to them. Uh, Toby and I are thinking that uh, a line of credit between three and four hundred thousand dollars probably would be right. Um, waiting to hear back from uh, the government. There's a different section of the government banking uh, division that is going to be working with towns. And I am um, probably, uh, and maybe the next meeting, we'll be talking about uh, a better feel for what the board would like to do, keeping in mind that by statute you may take a loan for less than a year on your own motion. Beyond that, there has to be a town vote. So what you are able to do with this line of credit is to take this line of credit at this point in time, draw from it as you need it, and um, hopefully be able to pay it off within the year after reimbursement. However, 
when you look at the process, and I just need to say this because, I, you know, will I be here at that time? I have no idea, but you do have to be aware that the obligation process, which allows FEMA to reimburse us, looks like it's six months to a year out, best case scenario, according to Kim, uh, I want to say Carnacci. Yeah. So if that's the case, it may need, you may need to put this on the uh, warning for town meeting to have the town make this be a, a permanent loan. It could be, I mean, it, it's just possible we won't have reimbursement in time within that one year. So uh, the intention, of course, is that we will. Now, we would be drawing on our fund balance between now and the time taxes come in, which we're still hoping, even if they do the lodge that grand list on Wednesday, I still have enough wiggle room to get that tax rate set and get you folks to uh, review it and uh, motion, make that motion by August 7th. If we go much past uh, Wednesday, uh, maybe we'd have to tweet that, and I hate to call you back in for a special meeting, but it's actually really important to get those tax bills out at this point in time. The legal requirements for payment of tax bills is that they cannot be due any less than 30 days from the date of mailing. So, you know, we're, th that's, our, that's our wiggle room with that. Now, we start to get taxes in all during that. Uh, no, wait, stop. Um, people start to pay their taxes very quickly, and they don't just wait until September 15th. If we mail it out, August, we're, we're thinking now August 11th is the possible mail out date based on the setting the tax rate on the 7th. Um, once those tax bills hit mailboxes, we frequently, I mean, that's it. That is go time where we are seeing tax uh, checks come in. So uh, we are not languishing that deeply into our fund balance at this point. You have a really big board order. It probably took your breath away, $129,000, oh, well, $132,000 plus. So let's talk about that. I thought that might give you some pause for concern. $62,000 of that is a check to uh, the East Callis Community Trust. That check is posted, posted to the amount of money that we already received from the state. It was dropped in our account on the 20th, $62,000 exactly, and we're writing a check against that balance. So that is not town money. Of that $70,000 or so left, $33,000 is a FEMA contractor expense, and uh, Toby has a, a is recalibrating his estimates, recalibrating, recalibrating. I, I uh, received a new estimate that dropped uh, what he was thinking uh, that we would be spending, which was close to $1.7 million uh, within the next six or seven months, down to $800,000 in contractors. So this is, um, and that's because uh, he had some new information from the contractors, in particular, with regard to Moscow Woods Road. So if it looks like, uh, you know, three to four hundred thousand dollars in a credit line may swing us uh, tidily. We're also looking at FEMA, the FEMA reimbursement of 25 percent. Now, I have a document you're going to need to have on your very next board meeting, please. And that is the certification of town roads and bridge standards. This was not done by the old board for um, this year, but I am going to um, trust that you, the new board, will get this done. We need this into the state. Why? Because this is an extra 10%. 
So the town then, the town's responsibility shrinks from 25% of $800,000, that's a big number, to 15% of that $800,000. And again, don't you know hang your hat on these numbers. These numbers are best guess projections at this point in time and certainly could change I mean, we can only guess what it's going to take uh, to get these projects done. Toby is really sharpening his pencil. I, I, we communicated over the weekend, we've communicated this morning at, to try and be able to give the board as much solid information as you can have at this point in time. So let's dial it back. If it's $800,000, somebody do something real quick for me. What's 15% of that? Is it $120,000? Yes. Is it? It is, right? What do we have? What do we have? We have a fund balance of $405,000. OK, so it is, I don't think we're, I think we're going to be, <laughs> I think we're going to be fine. I think we're going to be OK. What an optimist. <laughs> I, look, so you, Anne has heard me say this before. Callis has been here for how many, how many hundreds of years? Town clerk. 1781. OK. That is a, you do the math. That, you do the math. That is a long time. And it has been up and it has been down. And it's going to be here at least that long or longer. Unless I always say the comment, you know, comes and wipes us all out. So this is, we're going to take a breath. And we're going to know that this is a moment in time. And we're going to get through this. We have great credit. We have great audits. I think we're going to get another clean audit again this year. You have two clean audits behind you. You have a great relationship with the bank. We have a super fun balance walking into this. And uh, there's every reason to be anxious. I mean, I, I've had two nightmares already in the last week. There's every reason to be anxious. But, I, okay. but everything is really going to be, I think it's going to be OK. And as I've said before, it's a decimal point. Move the decimal point back to the left and like make this manageable in your mind. Uh, you know, you have a lot. This is, you know, it's a lot for me too. But um, I, I think the numbers, we're going to crunch these numbers and uh, it, it's going to go OK. That so is my <laughs> spiel for you tonight. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> So there's two things you m would like us to do tonight. Do you want us to authorize the line of credit? Uh, oh no. Uh, well, no, no, no. I, I certainly want to have one more little, one more conversation with you as to the amount because we'll have to okay. pay the interest. The interest is not reimbursable. That is on mm. us. So with lines of credit, if it works the same in a municipality as it does uh, for private individuals, you will be paying the interest. Uh, I think only on what you, uh, I don't know if we pay the interest on the full amount well, or only on what we have That was a question out. I had. How does that compare to the to taking out a loan? Uh, we don't know yet. Yeah. But, okay. I, you know, do, uh, maybe you don't want to take out a loan. Is that it reimbursable? Interest reimbursable? No. It's not. No okay. interest is reimbursable. Only, uh, only cost for repairs. So what this town road and bridge standards is a document that you need to remember and your select board assistant will help you remember. This needs to be done every year and filed with the state. And this document acknowledges that we, uh, our uh, road and bridge standards are compliant with the state best practices, that the minimum established by the state. The, uh, there is a book for Jamie and Anne Tolan. You probably already have heard of it, the Orange Book, right? So this is out of the Orange Book as it was revised March 29th, 2022, Section 7. Um, I'm going, this is blank. If you need Toby to help you fill it out, uh, you're supposed to just circle yes. Yes, yes, and <laughs> sign it. But uh, they, there's evidence in the record that this was submitted to the prior select board sometime in February of this year, but there is no evidence anywhere that it was signed. And so we're asking um, 
that it gets signed and we get Who that signs into it? the state. The, the select, signs board, the oh, select the board signs it. Yeah. So it is, it's a town record, and, it, and this it's very important that it's done. Can I just run it over to the guys? Yeah. Oh, please. And sign it, yeah. I mean, I know that we're doing it because we do it to the local roads, you know, the local roads. Which I, is I, you them. have that. Uh, like you can acquire a Toby. You do yeah, have Toby's a Toby's really good on that stuff, yeah. man. And, and oh, no, I know he is. We were on, sh that's part of our discovery process this weekend. Did that get done? Was it ever done? Fortunately, the wrong form was filed in, FY 20, uh, in uh, 2022. It was the form that was due, that was used uh, before July 1, 19, uh, 2019. But you know what? It's, it still says the same thing in a very brief way. Um, but we want to get back to using the current form and let's let's make that happen. That is definitely something you want so on your record. Yeah, so we can just we've just, we got the orange book sitting on the desk. We'll so road commissioners, that. can I put this on the next agenda? Can you guys get that done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll do it in the morning. But you're gonna oh I, I mean I, I just want to review it with the guys in the morning. I know they were doing it, but all right, and um, maybe and Toby should take a look at it. Okay, so. good. It's, it should be on your agenda seven. because you'll motion to right. to file that certificate. That's why I, I, I don't mean to overstep, but it's actually mm -hmm. important, and I wanted you to have it. Okay. Thank you. And you'll you'll want to come back to us in a week or two about the line of credit think, versus I'm loan. hoping to have more information yeah. from the bank by August 7th. I mean, we're going to be August not writing 7th. any bills again until August 7th. So, boom, the checking account is at stasis between now and then. And um, if we meet August 7th, do you want me to put it on the agenda for that? Date? Yes, unless I tell you that I have nothing to say, but I can't imagine that I won't. Uh, as okay. I said, to, because I always have something to say. Ask my husband, <laughs> or my kids, especially. But, uh, they would tell you. But um, as Toby is sharpening his pencil, it's it's helping inform he and I, and then collectively you. Um, to figure out what, what we think we need is a line of credit. I, I'd like to just dip into that okay. situation once and be done and feel secure that we have enough. Right. Now just a, a quick internet search does reveal that with a line of credit, you only pay interest on what you borrow on the line of credit. Oh, what you, what you're, what you take each time. Yeah, I, I think that that's the way it works privately. Hmm. I think. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, that you know, with municipalities, sometimes the uh, the rules are a little different, and I haven't talked yeah. to anyone. So, yeah. Questions for Sandra? Oh, no. let let me. Uh, oh, Tegan, why don't you, you go ahead? You guys go first. I'm nervous. Uh, the governor announced the thing about we would be getting our money from the state sooner than we normally did. I printed this out and highlighted it sitting on the desk over there. But we would municipalities would be getting their towns. State aid for highways? Not, it, I don't know, it seems like refunds or our money from something that we normally get later in the year. The education property tax probably, right? The I, I think so, I'm trying to remember now. But he said it's a thing we did back in 2011 and we're doing it now to kind of jumpstart having them. I didn't know if you had seen that yet, but I can talk to you about it tomorrow in the office if you're there. Cool. Or, or by phone. Or, by or scan phone. it to me and let yeah. me see it. Okay. Um, we. We've already received our state aid to highway, the first chunk of that. That was earlier this month, and we received the municipal portion of the property tax adjustment credit. Uh, that's a small, relatively small amount, but if maybe they're gonna pay the state aid to highway uh, uh, quicker than wait until the second quarter, so or the third quarter. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. I think Toby's supposed to be swinging by the office tomorrow. I just have a little concern that he might not have all of the costs that we've accrued so far. We've had, like Jordan hooked us up with someone who brought truckloads and truckloads and truckloads <coughs> of materials. That stuff is incredibly expensive. Um, and the two projects on like Singleton and Moscow are going to be 
And I don't know if he's talked to that contractor or not. I don't think so, because I've been talking to the contractor a lot over the last couple of days. So I'll try to touch base with him and make sure that he knows of all of that, because we're trying to do a lot of pre preloading so that when we start knocking stuff out, it goes faster and we can get the roads up. I think he's working on contractor contracts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I got Robert connected with our... Yes, yeah. so he's... Um, I don't, we don't need contracts for materials. We need contractors for the, uh, contracts for the... Oh, no, I'm talking money that we've been spending on the costs of things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we've been like, well, no, because it's, it's been kind of, I don't know, non-traditional. We've been stockpiling a lot of material and being very creative to try to get what we can. I think that's why and that's a lot of money and I don't know if he knows about all those different little our little hidey spots that we've been yeah. Oh well you better tell <laughs> him after well, I mean it's all going in but yeah, I don't know like they've sent a bill like the guys yeah, have like all the stuff they're keeping right track of but and not, to the office, not so. everyone is sending a bill immediately so yeah. I think that's uh, a we'll really good it. practice if we need to if we need to we put those bills on a 30 day you know we see that bill date and we don't pay them for 30 days. If we need to do that, we typically, when the bill comes in, we pay it. We're, we don't have any issue with that, but if that doesn't, if we need to slow things down from a financial standpoint, 30 days net works for everybody. It's very smart too, I think, to stockpile stuff right now because you're in deep competition yeah. with mm -hmm. other municipalities and I am so happy that you're pulling the let's pull that uh, trigger on getting that job description of uh, the ad out for the treasurer's job because anybody with any skills I'm afraid is is gonna get sucked up to help with FEMA mm -hmm. administration so it, it, there's already a short job pool and I'd like to see that ad out Okay, other questions for Sandra? Uh, just to, responding to Tegan's thing, what it says is the treasurer's office will be accelerating 11 million in state payments to 40 Vermont towns most impacted by last week's flooding, so just state payments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It might be property tax adjustment cre credits. That's real, that's ambiguous a little bit. I don't know. Other questions? No, oh, David has one. I just wanna say, I, the, uh, Last Terrar and, and Northfield, I think it, it took them a lot longer than a year to get their FEMA reimbursements. Yeah. Northfield had a mess. We are organized. Are they? <laughs> I don't know if they were organized, but I, Toby and I have, he is organized around this, and that's what it's gonna take. They're gonna come, they're gonna sit down in the office, and they're gonna go incident by incident Where's the material? Where's the invoice for this material? Where's the check? Where's the canceled check? Where's the contract? Where's the insurance certificate? And Scott and Charlotte are coming up to speed awfully quickly too. Oh, they're going to be like, fine. Yeah. So, so fill out those forms, everybody. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you, Sam. That's it, right? <laughs> yeah. Remember, move the decimal point to the left. <laughs> oh, I actually, one more. Do we have our FEMA person yet? The name of our FEMA person? Yes. I, I, I do not to know that. that. So? Um, Nick, don't, don't we have, we have a FEMA person, don't we, now that there's a regional person assigned to us? Uh, no, he was sort of a courtesy call, and every question we asked him, he replied, uh, we got to ask the state about that. It, but it was a specific person. We have to ask Kim, was it? Or oh, at the state? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Kim, Kim Reckon. No, but we need we need our FEMA person. We do, yeah, there's usually like a regional. She, I believe that Kim is the representative of, for FEMA for, from the state. That's how it got this kind of thing. So she's going to be the person who Callis works with, who sits at the vault and looks at the individual paperwork with you? That's what I'm asking. I do, yeah, not, I do that not know if that person has yeah, been identified. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's move on. Thank okay. you. Uh, thank you. <laughs>
Um, select board reports. Let's see. Roads. Because <laughs> we haven't talked about them enough yet. We have them. <laughs> what do you guys want to tell us about? And how are you we're doing? We're working on putting it back together. I'm trying to send out the email, preferably the day before, on what we're doing and keeping the fire department posted. Haggett Road's open. Probably not 100%, but it now matches the rest of Haggett Road, so that's a positive. Um, have you all be see, been seeing those? Ann sends out a list every morning, and sometimes even the night before. I don't know if everyone does. No. Well, they go to Barbara, who puts them on the website. Well, no, they go to Barbara, and they go to Sarah, who puts them on the website. Puts, Sarah puts yeah. them on the oh, website. Oh, Sarah's putting the whole kit and caboodle, so no salty yeah. language. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so it's not the list of what's about. getting fixed that day? Because that so, would be a good list, too. Well, no, that's yeah. what we're doing. Like, every day, this is what we plan to work on. but. You know, you may end up having, well, repeated beaver issues like on Gray Road. So we start off the night before, we're going to do this, and then the next day it'll be like, we did 80% of this, and then we wrangled some beavers again or whatever. So yeah, it's mostly, specific. here's where we'll be. And it's who's going to be there. No, no I, so I don't get yeah. that. I have not. I you have, have to go on the website to get it. I mean, maybe should yeah, you send it to the whole... Well, I can try to, but usually, yeah. like, it's one of those things. I'm like, I've got to get that... The cyber person, the, you know, I try to hit the people that I, maybe you can so, send it so to the So what I can start doing is I'll start, she, she's having all bit of trouble getting it to the select board. So when she wants to email you all, she asked me to do that. So I'll start doing that. Okay. I'll forward her day, nightly warning emails to all of you. It's a random cornucopia of people I tag in it. I just remember I got to have the computer over there. So I just kind of, and, and. Because the road condition map doesn't, if you look at the road condition map, it doesn't tell you what's being fixed. So, so if that's the translation for the public, it's just a little different than knowing like what's on the list that yeah. day. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And the guys are still working overtime all the time. Today they went yeah. home at five. <laughs> I was like, Whoa. and they got Sunday off, right? And they had Sunday off, and the yeah. animate co-op made them coffee and treats and left a message on Sunday, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I make them take a day off, and she's like, No, it's good, it's good. It's good. <laughs> But yeah. I, I have a question. Have we contracted with a, a, a company who drives a truck that says Perry on the side that's hauling dirt? So we have, I know Justin Morgan out of Danville has contracted, like some of them are subcontracting with additional people because dump trucks, we need so many dump trucks, like there's so much. So he's got people that he's bringing in that aren't, Part of his company. The re reason I'm asking is somebody is now driving a, a truck through town at a very high rate of speed, and we've gotten a lot of complaints. Is it, Whereabouts is it, is it? Mostly North Callis, and I've gotten a whole is bunch it of blue because I live. I think it's a it's either dark blue or black truck hauling dirt, and he blows through. Hmm. And two of my neighbors have tragically, not tragically, flagged him down and said, you have got to slow down. You are driving too fast. So there's a there was a big blue truck that I think said Perry on it that passed me a couple times when I was biking around here Sunday. Do you remember what roads you would help me pin it down? Um, it wasn't it right wasn't one of ours. It oh, was, it was still, Sunday? It was Sunday and it was bringing dirt to uh, there's a Wash out on a driveway half up Elmsley Road, just uh, this uh, side so of the Elmsley estate, and it looked like a big culvert or bridge out. And the truck, the truck I saw, that I think said Perry on the side, and was dark blue, was dumping at that private site. Okay. So just really I'll check with our so, guys. So I, I told them I would bring it up tonight in case okay. the town has contracted with this business. And ask them to please slow down. Okay. Any questions for the road commissioner who's been doing the roads while the other one's been doing the dam? No? Okay. Um, one other quick road thing that I'll just mention is the Woodbury That's Mountain right. Road. Yep. Um, the two year round 
full-time residents on Woodbury Mountain Road have approached me um, and asked if there was assistance in fixing their road, which is quite washed out. Um, and I said at this time, there really wasn't because it's a class four road. Um, but they are working on lining up a contractor to fix it. Um, and I said we'd be flexible on the right of way permit process. And that as soon as they had a contractor lined up, I'd connect them with a road crew member um, and get them to give the thumbs up and hopefully fix it before we meet again in two weeks. Does anybody have concerns about that? So they'd be telling what? So they just, they're going to have a contractor, probably either Chris Sayers or Hans Popow, who are both very qualified, yeah, okay. come in and fix Woodbury Mountain Road. Okay. And I said, rather than wait two weeks till we have another meeting to do an official right of way work per, per I'll have the guys look at it. Just have and be like, do the that contractor thing. have okay. a conversation with one of the road crew members and get a thumbs up on the plan. Okay, and with class four roads, like I know with Hayden in the spring, someone had been doing construction and it got really tore up, and so they just dumped gravel, and then one of the other residents kind of. Also yeah, made they, can, so they can do that, but we just would ask that. Yeah, they can take a look. Yeah. The, yeah. John Brady Manton has his hand up one day. Oh. oh, okay. John, yes? Um, just, just as a reminder, I just want to make sure that whatever standards were applied to Larry or in terms of his manipulation of that class four without permits, and now, now you guys have made clear what your expectations are for um, work on town roads, both in advance, getting advance approval, and in terms of whatever material requirements you would require of Larry Ward, and however else you um, required Larry Ward to conduct business, um, I expect that anyone who works on a class four will be held to the same standard. That's all. Great. Okay, that's thanks, reasonable. John. That's why we're having him connect with the road crew, yeah. Right. Okay, nothing else on roads. Let's go to Curtis Pond Dam. How's it doing? Curtis Pond Dam is still standing. With all this rain, there is water going over the spillway again. So the water level, which we pump to below average um, water level is back up to about average water height um, for this time of year. It's flowing over the spillway as it's supposed to, down into the rocks. They seem to be holding stable. Um, I think we're, we're in a pretty stable place with it right now. Um, it's at least until we can uh, build the new dam next summer. The, the question that I was hoping we could discuss tonight is when when we met with dam safety the night of the storm on the dam, Ben Green was there with us until 11 o'clock at night or later, um, and he outlined four steps that dam safety would recommend us take in sort of elevating intensity uh, to save the dam. And the first was the tarps over the top, which we did and they worked very well. Um, and the second was digging the trench down Camp Road um, to relieve water and let water go around the dam and back into the brook, which we did and it worked very well. The third was renting the pump, which we rented and we ran for about a week, pumping 10 million gallons a day. Um, all of those things contributed to helping the dam stay as sturdy as it did. Um, oh, and then the fourth was building the riprap uh, wall beneath it, which is sort of a wedge that braces the dam up. Um, that's constructed. It's holding very well. We just got the bill for that. It's about 11500 I can't remember if I sent that to you. Um, but so the last thing that he recommended was building a siphon over the dam, which would allow us to either keep the pond level down one to two feet below average from now until construction, 
or would be in place so that if a big storm came up, we could draw the t water level in the pond down four days before a big storm to increase storage capacity so it doesn't overtop again. Um, At what cost? I didn't get an exact estimate, um, but it from the bits and pieces I could get from the different contractors, it's between ten and fifteen thousand um, dollars. We learned from him earlier tonight in the executive session that that siphon likely would not be the one that would be used again during construction. That was one of my questions, is if we build it, will we use it? Do we need it anyway next year for construction? And he said there was a chance that it might be used during construction, but that it would depend on the contractor we select and the way they want to do things. Um, so both dam safety and the uh, Du Bois and King engineers are saying the absolute safest thing you could do would be to relieve some pressure and build a siphon um, either to keep the pond level down or in anticipating of a flood event. But both are also sort of saying it's up to you. That's the that's you know worst case scenario. You really need it if you don't do it and there's another flooding event, you'll regret it. Um, but if you do it and there's not another flooding event, you kind of wasted your money. <laughs> Is it, would it be reimbursable? FEMA reimbursable given the, the fact that it, it was precipitated by the emergency? I don't, I don't know if anything I think we're getting into a that. weird, they were starting to, the, the communication seems to be shifting from FEMA to like start putting things like this out to bid and right. and to start normalizing the operations for these types of uh, repairs and knowing how much we have to spend on just our roads infrastructure and knowing I guess I guess having gone through the flood event uh, and the stabilization, I, I think, respectfully, I think going through the, the RFP process uh, and seeing where that stands and where we stand with, uh, with whoever the contractor selection is and then having that conversation after that and maybe see if that in, if that contractor would be comfortable setting up the siphon that they would be using for that uh, for the reconstruction process sooner than later, um, but then be comfortable with the idea that they may not want to engage in any construction activity because that then assume you know they assume the liability of. It's, it's function and the dam, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the dam survived uh, the flood event. <laughs> it has some new armoring uh, and it's a calculated risk to maybe not spend $15,000 for something that is going to likely have to be reconstructed. So, uh, I, okay, Nick, go ahead. In my reflection of uh, my conversation at the dam with Ben Green, he said you wanted to get through the wrap, you wanted to get the carpet, and then he kind of drifted into, and you know, you could do a seismic. And I started to feel like it was the belt and suspenders kind of recommendation where they want to cover their face. They, they listed everything that they could think of that might reduce the risk. But I didn't feel like, I mean, we haven't gotten anything writing, this was just all verbal. And then, oh, then there is a siphon, you can do a siphon. So I felt like um, that he was trying to say it was optional, but he didn't want to write that on the paper. I agree, and I think he actually did go even one step further and say, if you're, if you're only going to do one of these things between the riprap and the, the siphon, definitely do the riprap. Like, that was clearly the most important thing. 
Um, and yeah, the siphon seemed almost. So if we did build the siphon, <clears throat> would we use it after the dam was reconstructed as well? Or would it just be to get us through the fall, really? It would really just be to get us through the fall and, and potentially and through the spring till construction spring. starts. Um, the, there's similar structures within the new dam that will allow us to, uh -huh. to reduce pond level if we need to for Can you future. sell a siphon once you've built it? It's pretty specific. Okay. Yeah, it seems pretty specific yeah. and it just seems, given the proximity of all of the other adjoining parcels, like it, it just seems like it would be a commitment on the town's behalf to infrastructure on something that we have already pretty explicitly say that we want to minimize the output of resources into mm -hmm. uh, until the construction process has completed and, and given given that that particular piece of infrastructure is scoped in the temporary structures associated with the construction process, you know, I think it's a it's a measured risk to say we're just not going. We're going to forego it, um, and we'll revisit that uh, throughout the throughout the year, um, the balance of this year and into the spring of next year, and leave room for dialogue with whoever the contractor is if they're if they're comfortable starting that installation you know well in advance to the coffer dam and the rest of the things in a way that's efficient then then maybe that makes sense to do but until then yeah maybe not so i take it nobody wants to make a motion that we build a siphon then it seems like a lot of money for yeah eight months or something yeah okay anything else under the dam i have a question um so I know the last time that Marge was here and other people from the Curtis Pond Association, um, and they talked about still waiting for the six permits. And you know, this whole process and what you have gone through, it really kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like, oh my God, we almost lost the town of Callis and now the state is like right there till 11 o'clock at night. Have they given you the six permits that you need to construct this dam? A bunch of them, yeah. No, we don't have them all yet. Do you have some? We have some, and there are some, like there are some that we have tentatively, but they're still in the 30 or 60 day public comment phase. Um, so they're coming together. I think we'll have them all soon. There's one, the Army Corps of Engineer one is delayed because the historic review found that the new dam would have a, a negative impact on the historic nature of the dam. And so it has to be sent to their office in DC for final approval. Um, so there's a few permitting headaches still outstanding, and I 100% share your frustration. I want to thank you. But I think we'll have them very soon. OK. Um, I think we've done IT. We talked about CV fiber. Jordan, anything else? Oh, okay. yeah. Was did the state review any other dams in the town as a result of this event? Yes, they met with yeah. John Reese and did the East Callis yeah. Dam, yeah. and I think they're doing they're doing every dam all over the state, as you know, including the one we own together. <laughs> yeah, I do actually have a list of the permits that are approved and not approved. Um, it's a little long, so I don't know if you want to hear it, but um, I have it. March updated it and sent okay. it out. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's eight o'clock, so let's not. <laughs> um, anything new on uh, Shed V. Callis? Uh, no. Uh, 
Not anything that's uh, worth discussing. Um, there are just evolving circumstances outside of our control, but none of them really change the track of uh, of the process. Uh, so at this point, um, we. Uh, we, we had filed for a motion to dismiss um, uh, the, I oh. guess, defendants. Now our roles have kind of res well, reversed. She was suing right, us. Right. So yeah. She was suing us uh, for, for relief. Um, and we are in a process of having that dismissed, and they rebutted the dismissal request for dismiss, and we have responded to that. But um, so we're just waiting for the process to play out in the courts where we could know relatively soon. Um, uh, there's nothing really left, there's no legal processes left uh, to slow that down. Um, so uh, we're at this point just waiting for the, the court to respond, I believe. Um, and there's some organizational stuff that we all need to kind of prepare um, should things fall in, our, in the town's favor. Um, and we want to uh, proceed with further actions. We'll need to have those things uh, kind of yeah. in place, so kind okay. of working on that. Um, but we're still largely in a in a holding pattern. Okay, um, thanks. I noticed that two of the things that really went way over budget this year were legal fees mm -hmm. and animal control. Uh, yeah. Yep. That's that. yep. For <laughs> sure, that is a large same. portion of it, though. I did, I, there, right now, because the same firm <laughs> is handling our legal fees for that and uh, union negotiations, there's there's some yeah. overlap. Yeah. There's some That's, overlap. I know there's some other things, things but yeah. yeah, but no, yeah, that that, that is definitely it's a large portion things. of it. And speaking of union, collective bargaining team, anything to report? Uh, yep. Yeah. So we have a meeting tomorrow. It's uh, supposed to be uh, our final negotiating uh, meeting uh, with the union. Um, we're relatively confident that the outstanding stuff sh should have a good chance of being resolved um, in the next meeting. Uh, should that be the case, uh, the, I believe that commission um, can, uh, has the authority to tentatively ag uh, agree to the terms and bring that to the board for ratification, which uh, could potentially, I guess, go on the August 7th meeting agenda. Um, don't hold me to that entirely, I guess. Um, but there had been some kind of false starts at the beginning, so and there's still a, a decent scope of things to agree on. So in the event we yeah. can't make it through that, we may need to set an additional meeting. Uh, and then there's just kind of like some escalation from there, but at this point, there's no indication that um, okay. that will that will need that. So okay. that's going that's going pretty well. Okay. We did lose one last week, though, didn't we? Have one scheduled in the middle of the right uh, in the beginning of the. We yeah. had the flooding. It seemed like vaguely. I recall we like we had a yeah. internal committee meeting um, um, okay. that would that would have been like a special meeting for the committee that we had to postpone. Um, but there wasn't largely anything to, there wasn't a counter proposal to consider. Um, so right now our counter proposal is in front of the uh, union and we'll hear whether or not there's anything to negotiate um, tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. Um, which the last item is to decide if we are going to meet August 7th. Um, and if we do, we could, try to conduct a few other things, but I would envision that as a fairly short meeting, unless you would like well, to replace. That would be a regular meeting. Then, Why then, would we have to? No, we usually meet the second Monday. Right, so because oh, okay. of the months, it would be three weeks between meetings oh, instead okay. of two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will be gone that following Monday. The Which 14th. is the 14th. One thing we could do is replace the 14th with uh, August 7th, and then say do one two weeks later. But, um, yeah. I guess. 
So I think it's not, there are going to be some bills that are coming. Like I have one for material and stuff that just came in today that didn't get put into the board orders, plus the the potential for ratifying a contract, uh, ideally. So I, I guess I would propose, you know, seeing if we could do a reschedule of our normal meeting to the 7th um, with kind of a limited scope of items. Right. If we right, does that make why sense? Why limit? Is like, why not just have a regular select board meeting? Like, maybe we do the public hearing that day if we're rescheduling on the seventh. Yeah. Right. We we should have a meeting on the seventh. Do as much as we can and decide that night if we need to meet the fourteenth okay. as well. Okay. Do you think we are ready to do the public hearing by the seventh? I didn't want. I was assuming the town was kind of preoccupied. The seventh is two weeks from now. We're talking about the future of Callus discussion. Um, I kind of, I'm getting the feeling things are calming yeah. down enough that we might be able to do that. Okay. So, so it, that'll be a regular meeting. That's kind of scheduled anyway. So um, I don't think we need to vote on that. We just understand that we're going to meet on the seventh, and then we'll decide about the fourteenth later. And, what's the, so, and we have to set the tax rate. Yeah, the, you can't rate the, let, we can't set the tax rate until the grand list has been lodged, and they were supposed to lodge that today. Not did today. they, Barbara? They did not. It got delayed, and they hope to get it on Wednesday. Okay. So uh, that's why Sandra was saying, assuming they get it Wednesday, she can then do the math to figure out what the tax rate should be. And if they want to mail it by August 11th, then certainly we should do it by August 7th. Right. Yeah. So that would be another one. Seven. Well, that's the reason yeah, for, yeah. for yeah. pushing it up. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I just think of our meetings as every other week right. anyway, so in my mind, August 7th was what we were meeting. Okay. Uh, and that is the end of our agenda, except that Sandra, I mean, Sir Barbara <laughs> wants to say something. So, did we need to have a clarification about t uh, Toby's FEMA hours? Oh, tonight? gosh, I forgot oh, all yeah. about that. Uh, why don't you go ahead and explain the issue? Okay. So at your uh, July 12th or 15th, I can't remember, one of the uh, select board emergency management meetings, Toby brought up the question about whether or not he could turn in FEMA hours to get paid by the town of Calais, hopefully reimbursed by FEMA. That would be over and above the monthly stipend he's already being paid to serve as the highway grants administrator. Toby and I came away, and this, and Toby and I did not discuss this at all. But we have since learned that we both came away from that meeting thinking that you guys approved Toby, nodding your head, saying, yes, you can turn in your FEMA hours and get paid. And this Anne felt like that wasn't the agreement, that the agreement would be that he that in in since he since while he's working on FEMA, he won't be doing the regular grants administration. So his regular grants administration stipend would cover his FEMA hours. I Jamie see. was confused the entire conversation. <laughs> Jordan started to make a motion, but then Jordan, but then Anne said, "No, we don't need to vote on it." But I believe she, she said, "We don't need to vote on it" because she thought nothing was going to change. So there's a lot of confusion about what the select board will or does want to approve for Toby to turn in FEMA hours for the town to pay him, and then add it to the FEMA reimbursement. And what's the right. rate he wants? And, and so, if, when he's doing his grant administration on a monthly stipend, it's regardless of how many hours he puts in. It just we averaged it out over the year. That's at a thirty hour, thirty dollars an hour rate. He is willing to do his FEMA work at twenty five dollars an hour, and he will not charge for mileage. And as of Friday, maybe when I talk to him. That had been Friday. We Friday had all or these Saturday. Friday or Saturday. He had logged uh, 49 FEMA hours thus far. And I believe he's turned he turned those in today. Yeah, he, he did. turned those in today. And I I need to do payroll in the morning, so I was wondering if I was putting him on there. <laughs> okay. So I don't know what you guys understood. <laughs> Maybe I was the only one who missed it. But um, what do you want to do? 
I understood that we would be reimbursing him for okay. emergency okay. hours. Right. That's that's how I took it. Okay. So is everybody fine with doing that? Let me just ask it that way. Yeah, it's not unreasonable. I think it's a lot to ask yeah. someone to volunteer for. Yeah, okay. Given that, could I have a motion? <laughs> I move that we uh, pay Toby $25 an hour um, for the time he spends working specifically on storm-related road recovery retroactive to the date of the storm. Rose, are you That's okay? Storm-related, what else did you say? Retroactively uh, to the date of the storm. Two weeks ago today. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. Second? Do we have second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And with that, is there anything else? Did I miss anything else? <laughs> okay. I'm going to just double check, and Tyler is supposed to be getting an extra $200 a week retroactive to the beginning of the store. That's right. Correct. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Oh, no, I need a motion. Uh, Sorry. Was somebody moved that we adjourn the meeting? And Tegan, there, there's also Dana's uh, retroactive uh, yes, calculation of sick and Okay. Wendy and I will be on the phone together tomorrow, so I'll make sure that we get that okay. back to time of hire. Time of hire. Okay, thank you. Somebody move to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Hey, it's only 8:10. Yeah, well, we started early. But...